Okay, there's so much paranoia that goes on in terms of planning a through hike or planning a hike. And one of those topics is how much food do I take? Do I, am I taking too much food? Am I taking too little food? Today we'll discuss that on The Legend of Teardrop. I'm JB Gunn. This is Teardrop, and welcome to New to the Wild. Hey, what's up, everybody? As you guys know, I'm JB Gunner, a.k.a. Teardrop, and today what we're going to be discussing is how much food you should have on the Appalachian Trail in general, how much you should start with, because this is a question that you get in a lot of the forums all the time. Well, how much food is it safe for me to take? How much should I start with? How much should I carry? Well, I'm going to give you my personal advice, because here's the truth. One of the biggest things that adds to your weight that makes your pack heavier is this paranoia that you're going to run out of food. Somehow you're going to starve to death in the middle of the wilderness. That may be on the PCT or CDT, but on the Appalachian Trail, let me make this clear, you're never really farther than three to four days away from a resupply. You're not going to starve to death. You see what I'm saying? Unless you left a town with no food, you're not going to starve to death. So how much food should you carry? So I want you to keep that in mind because ultimately the number one problem that I had starting out that you're going to have that anyone else had is typically we carry too much food. Now don't get me wrong, you don't want to carry too little either because that could lead to some problems. But really the main thing is water. As long as you got water, you'll, you'll be just fine. Um, now, so in terms of food, how much should you, let's just say you're starting off at Springer Mountain or maybe Amicalola Falls, the approach trail. How much food should you start the Appalachian Trail with. So, obviously, if you're starting at the approach trail and you've never done any hike, okay, you should plan on, listen, you should plan on, okay, the approach trail, typically for a lot of hikers, they can do it in one day, but I admit when I started, I was unable to. So, I do believe you should maybe start the approach trail with one and a half days of food. Because it's 8.8 .8 miles to Springer Mountain. There's a good chance that you'll start off, uh, that, you'll, that you'll end at Black Gap Shelter, which is right before Springer Mountain. Um, there's also a good chance that you'll camp somewhere on Approach Trail and not make it the whole way. But, you know what, let's just take the Approach Trail out of the equation. But I would have planned, if you've never hiked before and you're doing the Approach Trail, I would take a day and a half of food. No doubt about it. But let's start on Springer. Springer to Neal's Gap, typically, if you go Springer to Hawk, Hawk to Gooch, Gooch to, I don't know if you can make it all the way to Blood. Let's say Gooch to Gerard Gap, Gerard Gap to Neal's Gap. So you're looking at three to four days, three to four days. I never plan for food on the day I'm coming into town, particularly if it's not a lot of miles. But let's just say, at the very most, you should start the Appalachian Trail with four days of food. You should not go any higher than that. But... I also think that you should hold back on taking a whole day for the day you're coming into town. You're not going to starve that day. Take your breakfast, but try to get into town. Maybe just leave earlier and get into town before lunch so you can have time to, to do your laundry and all that shit while you stay at the hostel or wherever you're going to be. But, so my, uh, my, my advice is you start the Appalachian Trail with four days of food at the very most. Now, what does that mean? Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and I would say three different snacks throughout the day. You know, I, listen, I'm not big on uh, uh, trail mix. I think it's way too heavy, and it's just not that fucking good. You'll get tired of it quickly. But, and it's not just that. I also think you should have some sort of flavor drink for twice a day, for lunch, for dinner, and, and obviously coffee if you like coffee. But essentially what you want is you want to you want to knock your breakfasts out either in the morning before you leave camp or on the way. The best thing to do is take bars. That way you can pack all your shit, get ready, and eat a bar as you're walking, as you're starting your day. That is the, for me, the best way to handle it. Because you, for me, you don't want to have to do oatmeal and water and then clean out your pot and then get more water for the day. You don't want to do all that shit in the morning. You may, but you won't want to for long. Anyways. So, the Appalachian Trail typically is three to four days, 30 to 40 miles between towns. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes 25, sometimes something like that. But you're never going to fucking starve to death. It's just not possible. Not even in a 100-mile wilderness. Do you see what I'm saying? So, so, ultimately, 
you don't want to over overpack too much food. Take three days, four days, but always remember that when you're planning it out, that last day when you're going into town, just don't take much. Don't plan for that day a whole lot. Don't don't plan for your dinner drinks, lunch drinks, dinners and lunches. Just just leave earlier and get into town and go get you some fucking fast food. That's what you do. So, no, you know, ex let me also say this. In the beginning, you have not worked up that hiker hunger. And you're going to be so exhausted from these days, you're not even going to want to cook when you get in. I, every single time I start the Appalachian Trail, I'll start with three, four days of food. I'll get to Neil's Gap and still have two days of food. And I know you're saying, well, how did that happen? It's because I didn't feel like eating my first couple of nights on the trail. I was exhausted. That hiker hunger does not pick up till probably hot springs or so. You know, maybe maybe the NLC. You know? So, and even then, that's still kind of early. I'm just fat, and so I got hungry by that point. But in the beginning, you won't even want to cook, man. You'll be surprised. You'll be throwing a lot of food in that damn... You'll be saving a lot of food. In the beginning, you will not be hungry like that. So don't overpack your food. Seriously. You could probably get away with... If you start on Springer, if you're quick enough and you're badass enough, you could probably get to a fucking Neil's Gap on two days of food. Maybe one. It's just... It's only 30 miles. So... Just I'm just being honest with you. Uh, one of the biggest things that attribute to your weight is food. And the, one of the beauty... Well, we all love... We all consider eating our food, eating off weight of our pack. And that's cool and all. But if you're already carrying not that much food, that's even better. You know, look for lightweight shit. Believe it or not, snack cakes are lightweight. I like I like them. I think it, KB got me on that shit. Snack weight, snack pack. This, snack cakes are lightweight. I, I also enjoy bringing out double cheeseburgers. Because they're quick, they're easy to eat, and it just knocks off the weight. But how much food do you need on the trail? Never more than four days, really. Not really. Maybe five. But starting the Appalachian Trail, I'm saying three to four. I'm going with three. Three days is what you should take on the Appalachian Trail. Unless you're doing the approach trail, then maybe four. All right, I'm JB Gunner. I know this is just a quick jumbled video, and I just wanted to say how much. I just kind of wanted to comment on this. That you, there's just not a lot of food that you need to take. Don't be a fucking pussy. Just don't. You're not going to starve to death out there. Bye, bitches.